being forced to deal with a fate possibly even worse than death, coping with a properly devastating loss, and even having their lives ended in some of the most shocking ways imaginable. This collection of minor characters, many being suggested by the wonderful folks over at R Star Wars, weren't half made to suffer during their time in the worlds of Star Wars. So I'm Gareth, this is What Culture Star Wars, and here are 10 minor Star Wars characters who suffered horrific fates. Number 10, Corday. Following on from Star Wars fans being introduced to the Padme Amidala decoy known as Sabe during Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, another one of the former Queen of Naboo's loyal handmaidens soon popped up in the second prequel trilogy picture. While Sabe was able to safely make it to the end of that prior film though, the same sadly couldn't be said for poor Corday. Within the opening few minutes of Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, this brave handmaiden was shockingly murdered whilst disguised as Senator Amidala. With her ship being suddenly blown up in an assassination attempt moments after it touched down on Coruscant. Now sure, she definitely knew the risks the moment she was ordered to throw on Padme's clothes and pretend to be the VIP by Captain Typho. But she still suffers a pretty horrendous end for someone just loyally doing what they were told to protect an Amidala who instead travelled on an N1 starfighter. And worst of all, in the wake of Captain Typho's awkward line of I guess I was wrong, there was no danger at all, and the subsequent explosion created by bounty hunter Zam Wessel, all Corday could muster with her dying words was that she was sorry for failing the senator. Corday, you did anything but. Now I want to know what do you think is the most shocking prequel moment? Was it Corday's sudden death or something else? You let me know in the comments section down below. Number 9, Bib Fortuna. One of the most recognizable Twi'leks to ever call the Star Wars universe home, Jabba the Hutt's longtime Major Domo and Chief of Staff Bib Fortuna doesn't exactly have the happiest of endings in either canon or Legends continuity, it must be said. His sudden killing at the hands of Boba Fett during the Mandalorian Season 2 finale's end credit scene pales in comparison to the nasty fate this minor baddie suffered in the pre-Disney era of Star Wars, though. In the extended universe version of this galaxy far, far away, Way's history, Fortuna attempted to take Jabba's place following his death in Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. But rather than end up on the throne as he did in the new canon, the 1995 story of the day's annoyances Bib Fortuna's tale shows how this slimy soul soon bumped into the Bormar monks found wandering around Jabba's Tatooine palace. It wasn't long before these folks, whose brains were carried around by spider droids as a way of getting the most out of the power of their minds, put Fortuna through a similar similar horrific experience, yanking his brain from his skull and stuffing it into a bowl. Still beats falling into a sarlacc pit though. Oh, and speaking of which… Number 8, The Stormtrooper in the Sarlacc when the aforementioned Boba Fett was given his own spin-off series on Disney+, Plus, that show finally revealed precisely how this iconic bounty hunter managed to survive one of the worst fates imaginable, Death by Sarlacc. After being swallowed by that creature during Luke Skywalker and the gang's Han Solo rescue mission in Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, the son of Jango was ultimately seen doing all he could to keep from being digested. As he struggled to breathe, it was here when he noticed another unlucky soul who wasn't able to find a way out of one of the Sarlacc's many stomachs. At some point, an Imperial Stormtrooper wandering around in the desert evidently either fell or was tossed into this particular pit of doom. With this Empire soldier then finding themselves in the middle of a nasty digestion process, that takes a whopping 1,000 years. While they may not have been able to escape this horrifying fate though, their death meant they had no use for their air tube. So Fett pulled it out, took in a deep breath, and proceeded to burn his way out of trouble, kicking off a new chapter in his life that would eventually see him becoming Moss Esper's new daimyo. And it was all thanks to that slowly dissolving trooper. Number 7, Jar Jar Binks. Though the source of comic relief known as Jar Jar Binks may have started out life in the Star Wars franchise as a fairly important supporting character, the horrible response to the groundbreaking CG character played by Ahmed Best soon resulted in the Gungan's role becoming a minor one throughout the rest of the prequel trilogy. And while Binks did at least make it out of those movies alive, the fate he eventually suffered in the time post Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith was undeniably tragic. Exiled by those on his home world of Naboo, 
due for his part in the fall of the Republic, Chuck Wendig's Aftermath Empire's End novel, revealed that Jar Jar ultimately ended up becoming a street performer in the time that followed the Battle of Endor, entertaining kids but not exactly putting a smile on adults' faces. Sound familiar? After going through the pain of watching a number of his pals fall during the prequels, I'm dealing with all of the guilt that must have come with being the person responsible for granting the eventual Emperor emergency powers. Getting painfully shunned by his own people and clowning around for the rest of his days feels like an especially cruel feint. Number 6. Malakili Returning to the various folks found wandering around Jabba's palace during the Skywalker saga, few will ever forget the first time they witnessed poor old Malakili's heart break in two. Also known as the topless creature caretaker in charge of looking after the giant rancor seen clashing with Luke Skywalker early on in Episode 6 Return of the Jedi, the death of that very monster was one of the most surprisingly emotional moments of the original trilogy. Whoever thought they'd find themselves being moved after the slaying of such a terrifying beast by the supposed hero of the story. But this wasn't just a random animal Malakili was looking after. This rancor went by the name of Patisi, with the animal-loving soul even planning to escape with his pal in the future. His sudden death within Jabba's palace had an understandably devastating impact on the guy. Malakili even thought about suicide in the wake of this tragic moment in his life. Sure, he'd eventually go on to open a restaurant in the years that followed Patisi's demise, but it's clear that a little piece of Malakili died too during that plan to save Han Solo. Cheers for checking out this Star Wars video today. Now go and hit that subscribe button down below for more of this sort of what culture stuff in your corner of the galaxy. Number 5. Tortured Droids as this list has highlighted a number of times already, the moment a character finds themselves within the giant slug gangster Jabba's palace, a rather harrowing fate is often inevitable. And it's not just those various humans and aliens who walk through those giant mechanical doors who often ended up suffering. Even droids had a bad time of it once they were rolled and or forced into the hut's gaff. Take those numerous minor robotic characters seen in the background after R2-D2 and C-3PO were handed over to Jabba as gifts and thrown into his droid pool in Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. For whatever reason, a squirming gonk droid wound up being horrifically burned by a hot iron as another droid known as 8D8 followed the cold EV-99's orders to torture it. Then there was Jabba's last protocol droid, ATM, an interpreter who pissed off the crime lord and was ultimately disintegrated and tortured right in front of the hut's next protocol assistant, 3PO's mortified eyes. If you thought being a droid meant you were safe from the horrors of painful abuse in this galaxy far, far away, then think again. Number 4. The Cut in Half Clone Many stormtroopers and clone troopers ultimately gave their lives fighting for either the First Order, Empire, or Republic throughout the big screen Skywalker saga, various TV series, and other Star Wars media. But some of these ends were certainly far more savage and disturbing than others. Back when the clones were still fighting the good fight alongside the Jedi during the Clone Wars animated series, a number of these Republic troopers were there to help the likes of Obi-Wan Kenobi, Anakin Skywalker, and Ahsoka Tano rescue Jedi Master even PL from the Separatists. And it was during Season 3's counterattack episode when one particular clone suffered a fate similar to the one a certain Maul did during the events of Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Though this soldier seemingly didn't find a way to survive, sadly. As the likes of Kenobi, PL, and their clone pals tried to keep from being sliced in two by security doors during this perilous mission, well, you can likely guess where this is going. Though the actual moment door hits clone isn't shown on screen in the animated series, the gruesome sound of effects that followed as another door slamming shut blocked the audience's view, told you all you needed to know about this trooper's fate. Oh boy, was it horrific. Number 3, 264 Oh, we need to talk about Little 264. First showing up in the Star Wars Rebels Season 1 episode, Rebel Resolve, this R4 astromech is initially seen working for the Empire before being captured by the Spectres. From here, the often grouchy droid known as Chopper is disguised as 264 for a mission, with that one-time Imperial courier droid actually helping out the heroes while Chopper was undercover. Then, just when it looked like 264 stood a chance of becoming the latest Spectre, that astromech Menace Chopper booted him off the ghost. 
Things then went from bad to worse for this minor character post rude ejection. With the Ballad of 264 in the Rebels magazine showing how the droid went from acting as a farm droid on Lothal for a spell, to being sent to a depressing Imperial outpost after he was reclaimed by the Empire. The unexpected arrival of none other than Sabine Wren, one of those aforementioned spectres as a prisoner on that freezing planet, seemed to offer him hope that he could perhaps escape with those rebels, however. But in a cruel twist of fate, after the Spectre's Phantom Shuttle got caught in a tractor beam in the wake of him managing to free Ren, 264 knew he was the only one who could break them free from it. Following his decision to get off the shuttle and manually override the tractor beam, 264 was then left to freeze to death on a pile of junk outside the outpost by the Empire. And though this doomed little droid never lost hope that his friends would one day return to save him, it's safe to assume he lived out his final days out in the cold after his moment of bravery. 264, you are gone but not forgotten. Number 2. The Decraniated they may have initially seemed like little more than another intriguing background figure wandering around in this galaxy far, far away during their appearances in the Star Wars stories Solo and Rogue One, but the truth behind these decraniated souls is about as distressing as it gets. Created by the creepy cosmetic surgeon Dr. Cornelius Everzan, the bloke seen trying to beat up Luke Skywalker in the Mos Eisley Cantina during Episode 4 A New Hope, these strange half-headed beings were actually horrifically modified humans designed to be subservient cyber slaves that could be sold to make his then boss Crimson Dawn's Dryden Voss a bit of extra cash. But things got that little more disturbing when Everzan eventually ended up on Jeddah. It was revealed in the visual guide for Rogue One that the always experimenting surgeon opted to keep creating more of the decraniated, this time taking injured victims from the local insurgency, shockingly modifying them so they didn't possess an identity, and then selling them off as unwilling servants. Fates don't come much more appalling than being forced into a life of servitude and having your entire personality ripped away just to make a bit of extra money. Horrific stuff! Number 1. The Grand Inquisitor this spinning lightsaber-wielding Grand Inquisitor has shown up in everything from the Star Wars Rebels animated series to the live-action Disney Plus Obi-Wan Kenobi show over the years, even surviving being stabbed by fellow Inquisitor Reaver during that latter series. And though this particular minor villain often found doing Darth Vader's bidding in the galaxy far, far away would eventually fall after a brilliant duel with Kanan Jarrus and Ezra Bridger, that actually wasn't the end for the former Jedi Temple guard. After the power and failed to defeat those Jedi in the Rebels Season 1 finale and opted to let himself die, Vader actually refused to allow the Grand Inquisitor to pass on from the mortal world. And rather than finding some kind of peace after seemingly taking his own life, this Dark Side Force user spirit was instead forced to continue serving the one-time Anakin Skywalker. How? By being trapped on the Outer Rim world of Tempest and made the guardian of an old Jedi outpost. With that role ultimately seeing him clash with Luke Skywalker of all people in the Star Wars number 6 comic, as the son of Vader looked for a new lightsaber, Luke was able to best the Grand Inquisitor in their fight. But did that defeat finally lead to the alien from Utapau's freedom? Not a chance. Instead, a frustrated Vader kept his soul trapped, a cruel move which led to the Grand Inquisitor uttering a few painful words that acted as a callback to the ones he said before his rebel's death. Noting how there are worse things than death. And he wasn't wrong, was he?